There's no partiality with God. God can do, God can also make us the same way. What God did for Jesus, what he did for Paul, what he did for Peter, he can do for us as well. That's God's promise. He's not partial with anyone. And I was thinking about there's certain things that we cannot communicate. Even though we want to give it to our children, we want to give it to others, we can't. One of those things is if I'm thirsty, I cannot make somebody else thirsty. If I'm hungry, I cannot make another person hungry, no matter how much I desire it. And it says beautifully in Psalm 34, and you can turn with me there, Psalm 34 Psalm 34, verse 8. Psalm 34, 8. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. How blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. And so when we spend time here together, our longing is what we've tasted that we can also give a little bit of a taste to others. Sometimes we go to these shops and they have small samples that they give out. And you take a little taste of it. And the reason they give it out is not because they're generous, but they want you to taste it. And once you experience just a little bit of that, you'll buy more of it. And with God, all these things which we speak about on a Sunday or Wednesday, it's to give you a taste of something that's, that is truly that we can experience in our life. And even with God's word, I can tell you as testimony, it's not always been that way. There have been times where I've read God's word and I'd come back and I, Lord, I, I feel like I didn't receive something this morning as I read it. But then I go again. Because there are times when I go there and God speaks to me in a special, intimate way that I'll never forget again. And I say, you know what, Lord? There is a wonderful way you can speak to me intimately. And today, if I don't get it, I'm going to go back again. Dear brother, sister, young person, go. Treasure is never found on the surface. I see some people sometimes going down with these metal detectors on a beach or something, and they're longing to find something there. And I know that if I called one of them up and said, hey, you didn't find anything, why do you keep going searching for something? He says, no, maybe tomorrow I'll find a golden ring or something there. They keep going over and over again. Even sometimes they may not find anything, but why? because they have that hope that they, there is treasure there that they're going to find. And that is the way it is with God's kingdom. We turn, in, turn with me to Matthew 13. Verse 44. Matthew 13, 44. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in the field, which a man found and hid again, and from joy over it, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. If somebody goes and sees him digging and they don't see anything, they don't know that there's a treasure there, they'll be wondering, why is he digging over there? But he knows why he's digging there. He's found something. And I was thinking about uh, in my backyard, if I wanted to, dig a foundation to build a, another building there or another home there. And I go to my friend and say, hey, would you like to come and help me out? I want to dig in the backyard. Can, here's a shovel. And he'll, the first thing he'll probably ask me is, how much are you going to pay me so that I can dig with you? I said, no, you're my friend, so why don't you come along and just dig with me just because you're my friend? He may come as a friend and dig the first day, and then in a few days he might disappear and I'll be asking, hey, oh yeah, I had something else that came up. I'm sorry, I couldn't come. But if it was the same friend and I went 
went there and I, I, I told him, hey, I, I was digging the other day and I found some gold there. Um, would you be help, would you like to help me uh, dig, dig with me? I can imagine that same friend ringing my doorbell at five in the morning. Hey, uh, I think we should start digging before the sun comes up. I think we should go and find something. Hey, it's already, it's too early right now. Why do you want to start digging? No, no, I think we have to start early and get something. It's the same person. But the reason he had a longing to get up and wake up and dig there because he knew that there was something that he was going to get out. Nobody had to go and tell him to go and dig. He was going to do it on his own. And uh, for each one of us, don't be discouraged about how it's been till today. You may have come to God's word and you went through it. And I asked the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, you're the one who moved in the men who wrote this book. Holy Spirit, you're here today as well. Speak to me. Show me how I need to read this so that I get what you meant to say in the word. As you wrote this down, there was something you wanted to convey. Holy Spirit, take that and speak to me. Every morning, Lord, I want to hear from you. Speak to me personally in a special way. Let me find those treasures that you have hidden there. I think it is in Psalm 119, and I'll close with this. Yes, it is in Psalm 119. Or, yes, Psalm 119. Verse 18. Psalm 119, verse 18. Open my eyes that I may behold wonderful things from your law. Lord, as I open up your word and I read through it, Lord, help me to find those treasures. Help me to find out something wonderful as I open up your word so that I will go back to find more. May the Lord help us. Amen. Thank you, uh, brothers. Um, What we heard earlier is something that the Lord has impressed I believe impressed on me this week as I was thinking about what we heard about la- heard last week on um, the exceeding precious and magnificent promises that we can receive uh, through the God's divine power and those magnificent and exceeding great pre- and precious promises that we can uh, receive and one of those is the uh, likeness to Christ uh, being conformed into his image, having his nature. And the scripture that uh, I believe the Lord impressed on me was Hebrews 6, uh, 11, and 12. Um, And we desire that each of you, each one of you, show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end, that you do not become sluggish, but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. And I was thinking of those great and magnificent promises, and I came to this verse, and I believe the Lord was impressing on me in relation to uh, reading of God's word, is to not become sluggish, uh, because it's so easy uh, for myself to to become sluggish. It's, it's against nature. Um, uh, they talk about the body at rest wants to stay at rest. There has to be something outside of it, some stimulus for you to move. Um, if something hap- if that stimulus is not there, motivation or whatever it is, it just naturally goes to a state of, of sluggishness. Um, and the Lord was impressing on me uh, in relation to the faith that comes through the reading of God's word and uh, hearing God speak. Because uh, in uh, Romans 10 and 16, a very familiar uh, scripture. Uh, <clears throat> 
Hebrews 10, uh, <clears throat> 16, but they have not all obeyed the gospel for Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? And in 17, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Um, and, and when I read Hebrews 6, it says that we uh, should not become sluggish, but we uh, are to imitate uh, but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Uh, and, and for me, I believe the Lord was speaking to me uh, in relation to the reading of God's and the study of God's word and hearing God speak to us, speak to me, um, and is to look at those examples. I know we've been hearing about people in, in, uh, in our Friday night prayer different uh, people but we even have people in our midst that you that you see their life that that they have uh, put emphasis on certain things and that's why their life is the way it is it just didn't happen uh, because of uh, you know, what they call osmosis or just because they was around the church or close to the church but they did something uh, there was a difference between them and someone else who didn't have that desire not only the desire and the cry in the heart but that cry uh, the true cry in the heart, which the Lord is teaching me, is that it will drive you to do something. Uh, not that doing that will call will will um, make God do, do something. It's not. I mean, not necessarily that. It's God's mercy that He does things for us. But but there's a driving Lord. I want to receive from you um, that precious and those magnificent promises. And your word says this, and then I will just do that. I want to uh, reach out. I want to diligently seek the Lord. Uh, the Bible says in Hebrews 11 and 6 that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Um, and they that believe it, uh, they that come to him must believe that he is and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. Um, and what the Lord is teaching me is that the rewarding is, is himself. Um, and but for me, uh, the Lord said, don't be sluggish. Um, uh, but if you want to receive though that promise, uh, it comes through faith and patience. Uh, faith comes through uh, hearing God speak to us uh, through his word. Um, and and those are there are people in our midst that we can imitate uh, because they receive emphasis. They had emphasis on certain things, um, not imitate exactly what they did like talk to them and say well uh did you how much how long did you study and then i studied that long or i pray as long as they did or something like that but what lord is impressing me is that what they put emphasis on um and one of the things is that is the study of god's word um and and that is something that i want uh to imitate i want to see uh, the the end of a person's faith and the Bible talks about it, and you can see see it with your own eyes what God can do through a person who who is not sluggish but are seeking him diligently and what the and I, sometimes I would pray to the Lord and I, I don't know if it's the right prayer to pray but sometimes I, I say Lord I'm I, I I'm tired of hearing about things happening in this person's life or that person's life and reading about these things. And I know it's good for us, but I said, Lord, what is what, what good is it if I just keep hearing about people who have given their lives to the Lord and they have the, the abundant life? They have a life that is uh, free from all sin. They have a life that is uh, that is radiant. They're always radiant. And what good is that if I just keep hearing those things and not experiencing it for myself? And so um, I believe the Lord is impressing on me to don't be sluggish in, in uh, hearing from the Lord, uh, but to, uh, to run, follow hard after him.